Hi, it's Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today we're going to be talking about a mechanism that is in a bike that is a bit unique from all the other mechanisms. Um, so we're just going to have a quick look at it. So what we're looking at is a uh, water pump seal. So a lot of engines, a lot, a lot of bike engines have the main core of the engine. So basically, in the sense, what you'd call the bottom end of the gearbox. Most bikes are unit construction, which means that the gearbox and the engine, as it were, are actually part of one um, assembly, right? Just one thing. They're not separate. Harley Davidson's other bikes of that. Ilk, in a sense, if you want to say that, have the, the core engine and then a transmission that are separate, and then they'll have some drive between them, a belt, a chain, whatever. Sometimes they've got housings that actually mount them together, so it's kind of like an intermediary where they'll have like a gearbox that's bolted to a housing that's then bolted to the engine and all that jazz. Uh, that's actually quite inefficient. You're not making the most of your packaging, your block as it is or your casing whichever way you want to put it and um, to make the most to have the most efficient arrangement to have the best architecture for an engine you want to use the least amount of walls in a sense think about it like uh, think about it like uh, two boxes where can you see you can see here so imagine you have two boxes one like this, and one like this, a smaller one just say, and these units are separate, so you've got six sides. If you put them together, just say we cut this bit off here, this shaded section, if we remove that face there, and we remove the face, the opposing face that we can't see on this one, so that face there, this one, we save the weight of both this face and this face, right? We save the weight of those things. We don't need to, I've gone off camera. <laughs> we, we save the weight of those two surfaces, which is a more efficient design, right? Because the lighter we can make the engine, it means that the power that we produce has to push and accelerate less mass. So it's more efficient. If you can do the same job. Now, a lot of the times with stuff like this is that uh, you might want to keep one of the walls. So let's just say our box here and here. Let's just say this is our engine and this is our water pump housing. We don't want to go all the way through, so we'll just remove one of the walls. We're not double walling. We just have one of these surfaces. And uh, you could almost call them bulkheads. You've got this wall that then the you know the water pump interfere inter, interfe interferes with interfaces with so let's just say that this box is a water pump and this is our engine we need a way to seal we need a way to drive the pump which will be with a shaft or just say a shaft on a sprocket on a chain it doesn't matter we need some way to drive it but there's a big problem water and oil I know some people think that water and oil, one mix and number two were used in bikes in the 1980s, but they weren't, I can assure you that. Um, water and oil, you don't want them to mix, right? So we need a system where you have the core engine, which is full of oil, and you have the water pump side of things that's full of water, and we want to make sure that they are not connected in any way, that they don't intermix in any way, but we need to breach this in this this interface between one and the other so we have a seal this is a breakdown of that seal and we'll go to the bench and i'll show you the, the one in real life um but simply we need to allow rotation and we need to allow the shaft to pass through this seal and allow it to rotate but we need to stop water and oil from you know crossing this boundary so when you do this it's like okay how are we going to pull this off and the problem is is the rotating bit if you look at normal oil seals so you look at normal seals for your um the output shaft for your gearbox where your sprocket goes on you look at your shifter shaft stuff like that you have these oil seals and these oil seals are basically just a 
crimped formed piece of steel with rubber elements on them and then there's some kind of spring system in there. There's loads of different variants, but basically you're just choking down on the shaft. That's fine because that seal is a one-way seal. And what I mean is, is that um, the inside is the one that's applying pressure to the casing. So basically it's outside, which is quite stable. We, we live here versus inside an engine. Inside an engine, it's hot. Uh, you know, there's hot oil, there's loads of stuff churning around, but generally speaking, the air's pumping backwards and forwards, so the pressure changes, but as long as you can overcome them, them pressure changes, the oil seal will be fine. The shaft rotates, goody goody gumdrops. And if a tiny bit of oil does leak over time, I get out with this shaft, you know, there is a tiny bit of leak by, blow by, it's fine, it's not the end of the world. The engine is churning out smoke, you know, exhaust gases and all sorts of stuff not like that is you put oil on your chain and that's flinging it everywhere it's not the end of the world it's not detrimental to the engine's performance you're losing a tiny bit of oil over time and we're talking tiny the difference with the oil and water side of the equation when it comes to a, a water pump seal is that the water goes from really really cold to really really hot at high pressure and then on the other side is a fluctuating pressure system because the pulse is in the crank casing. But generally speaking, it's hovering around atmospheric. It drops a bit below, it goes a bit higher, where the pressure in the, in the water side, you know, if you look at your cap and it says 1.4 bar, that's 1.5, what, one and a half atmospheres about, it's approximately there, which is in PSI, we're talking about 20, 25 PSI, which is a lot, right? That's almost getting into tyre pressures. That's a lot of pressure. So that would cause a normal oil seal in a sense, or it can cause a normal oil seal to rupture and fail. So instead, we have this system, this oil seal system. And I didn't actually draw it on there. We'll have a look closer look when we get to it. But basically, that's the dividing line between the two. So if I put a little pair of scissors <laughs> like that, that's the dividing line between the two. So we have uh, a, a sheet steel bucket, um, which is basically houses half of the seal. We have a spring, we have the seal interface up here, and then we have a rubber bit that bungs into the rest of it. There's a few ways to do it, like which bit do you put in the impeller, which bit do you put in the seal, so on and so forth. Usually the oil sealy bit goes in the impeller side of things. Um, but we still have to stop all the water, the water interface, you know, so basically there's oil on this side most of the time, nearly every time, and then there's water on this side. We need a seal that can rotate, but that is perfectly good at sealing, and that's where this interface comes in. So we'll have it, we have a graphite section, so basically pencil lead, and we have a PT, that's a bit off. <laughs> it's because I'm this side drawing, and that's a, it's a PTFE section. So what we have is we have two physical seals that are being pressed against each other uh, under the force of the spring so that's our normal force in this case uh, and it's allowed to rotate and then we use graphite because it's extremely stable propylene glycol, propylene glycol ethylene glycol rusty dirty water all that kind of jazz doesn't really it doesn't affect ptfe it's very very stable it can take the temperatures as well, can PTFE, and the graphite's the same deal, basically. And you have two things that can seal really well. Um, the PTFE is actually really quite robust, and what happens is, is the graphite, as it goes round, the graphite and PTFE are, wait for it, water systems, they're super slippy. I know it's oil and water, and they are super slippy, but for once... <laughs> For once, it is actually super slippy. Graphite on PTFE is really, really slippy. And what happens is, is the graphite ends up leaving deposits embedded into the, the, the PTFE. So that does two things. If you have a rough microscopic surface of the PTFE, then what happens is, is that the graphite comes along and it deposits the graphite into the holes like so filling them up making them beautifully smooth number two is it now means that the graphite now slides on itself 
and if you thought graphite and PTFE were super slippy, graphite on graphite is also super slippy. So this is super, 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 super slippy, 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 super. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a system that wears itself, embeds itself in, and then once it gets to that kind of equilibrium, it's a beautifully good seal. And these, generally speaking, don't fail. Right, it, they're very, very simplistic. As long as you haven't been messing around with them, if they're just left under normal operation, these things work fine. Because basically, it's the rubber part of the seal. These two are absolutely golden because they're super, super, super slippy. And it's just a simple spring arrangement. If everything's installed properly, these things should last beyond the thermal equi equilibrium of the universe. Anyway, let's go to the bench and I'll show you these things in real life. This is just a reference, so if you want to go back and go hang about, I don't get that, you can look back at it. Right then, so, this is a brand new one. I had to buy one of these because I had to muller one. I had to muller the cup getting out of the other seal, if you get what I mean. Any road, you can see that this section here, that very shiny, shiny section, that there is the graphite surface. It's silly reflective if you look at it really for what it is. It, it is black. Um, and then this bit is the rubber cup section. This is the PTFE bit here, as you can see. And all they do is they press against each other with this spring. So that's the force that's applied to them. And then this thing, you know, this thing just turns around. It's just having a good time. It just does this and it'll leave. You can see there automatically we've got a skid marker crap in there. And that is the way it's meant to work, right? That's not that's not a bad thing. So if you push these together and give them a quick rub. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. Uh, you can start to see the deposits in the if I get the camera work right. You can start to see the deposits in the PTFE there like that. So, and this will make like a dirty stain on it, you know. But this, these two rub together, they have fun times rubbing the junk against each other. Get out of the way, bag. They have fun times. Now, you might also notice that this blue banding on here, I don't know the name of it specifically, but I think there's two versions to this. This is either a heat-activated adhesive, or it's a compression, which is almost the same thing. It's a compressive um, activated adhesive. So what, basically, it's like a Loctite. And what you do is you, you push it in, and when it gets, it basically gets hot because of the friction. When you force it in, this thing just, in a sense, melts, resets into its new life, you know, into its new hole, and then that's it. So that seals this outer section. That seals that two the um, casing, you know what I mean? And then this bit sits on here, and this plums into your, 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 just say your water pump, that kind of jazz, and then this sits inside your casing kind of stuff. So that's the whole system of how it works together. And um, you can see there's also a bonding agent with rubber between the graphite and between this, because it's actually quite hard to stick things that are super slippy that don't want to wear, are we? It's just focus. There we go. It, it's quite hard to make to to kind of stick things to things that don't want to be that are super slippy. Super slippy things are hard to stick to. Anyway, that's what they are. I just thought because I've got this brand new one out before we install it, um, I just wanted to go through a bit, just a bit of a a description of what this is. So if you see one of these, it's a very simplistic. Uh, seal that has actually quite a lot of, you know, complicated, it, it's loads of things, right? So we're using friction, we're using forces with springs, we're using this, that, and the other, for just a very, what, what seems like a very simplistic thing. To <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. No! 